Red Brick Media. Follow the CDs, DVDs, lectures, khutbah, conferences and Quran recitations. All revenue generated supports our dawah work, supported by visiting our store. You can now purchase directly from our site www.redbrickmedia.co.uk بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending immense greetings and salutations upon the final prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Looking at the general Sunnah of the Quran, wa Sunnah Allah al Ard, the Sunnah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala upon this earth and in the heavens as well, you find a general theme of running in pairs. Wa min kulli shayin khalaqna zawjaini la alakum tadhkaroon. We created everything in pairs that you may reflect and ponder about that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heaven, created the earth, created the sun, created the moon, created the male, created the female. And likewise, we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created al-jannah wa nar paradise and the hellfire. And likewise, a the theme inside the Qur'an follows that concept of peers as well. The Qur'an comes between the Bashir and the Nadir, giving you glad tidings and giving you warnings. The Qur'an comes between Targhib wa Tarheeb, between encouraging you to do certain actions and telling you to distance yourself and to stay away from other actions. The Qur'an comes with Wa'dun wa Wa'id. Wa'dun promises are given to the believers and certain individuals and wa'idun, a severe chastisement and punishment is promised upon other individuals. And likewise, the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his task as well that we find, Ya ayyuhal nabiyyu, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. O Messenger of Allah, Prophet of Allah, we sent you as an individual to be a witness upon humanity, giving human beings the glad tidings, and likewise to give them the severe warnings as well. That is amongst the task and the role of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Once again, we do not send you except to the whole of humanity, to all of the worlds, to give them glad tidings and to likewise to give them a warning as well. But most of mankind don't seem to have knowledge or understand this concept. And as we want to focus upon many occasions, we find we talk about the fearful issues. Remind them about the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The final ayah in the Quran sent down upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Suyuti highlights in his works of al-itqan fi ulum al-Quran. The Messenger only lived for some nine days after this verse was sent down. This verse inside Surah Al-Baqarah, some approximately verse 281, if I'm not mistaken. Fear that day when you have to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many times we give the concept of takhweef, of scaring individuals about the final ending, or Su'ul Khatima, 
a fearful bad ending that could happen to the individual. As we know, just like innamal a'malu bin niyat, actions are by their intentions, and likewise the opposite, innamal a'malu ala al-khawatim, actions are to be judged upon the final ending of the individual. And so tonight we want to move away from the concept of fearing ourselves, to develop the fear, but to lean over towards the hope, the mercy, the paradise, the bliss, the blessings. We begin to focus upon that tonight about what could be in store for the believers that are upon this dunya. Especially when we find al jannatu haqq wa naru haqq in the supplication of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that indeed paradise is a reality. And maybe that reality is somehow drifting away from us. That we claim to be believers but somehow we don't begin to strive to become believers in that paradise or to return back in that home. Especially that we find this dunya in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, a dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. This world is not our paradise, brothers. Our paradise is somewhere else. And that's the mu'min has to begin to strive to return back to the real paradise. Especially as we're looking for infinite justice, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ Are we going to make those individuals who are criminals to be like the believers? مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ How do you judge? There has to be a time whereby the believer will return. As we find inside the hadith, وَأَمَّا الْمُؤْمِنْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَدَّخِرُ لَهُ حَسَنَاتِهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ For the believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stores their reward. The good end for that individual inside the akhirah. But we have to have that belief in the akhirah. The stranger is the Quran begins by highlighting الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Believers are those individuals who believe in the unseen. The rest of the Quran is nothing but the unseen. The whole discussion of the Quran in general is the unseen. Things that we can't see. So the Quran is creating the framework and the mind and the yaqeen and the certainty inside the heart of the individual. Whatever we begin to discuss, you need to have a deep devotion, commitment towards it. And even when a person becomes dominant upon this land, strange is we begin to slip and not understand. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Inna al-arda lillahi yurithuha man yasha'u min ibadihi This earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He may give you inheritance, dominance, power, sovereignty, rulership, ownership on this land. But you know the real believer? Wal-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen That even you become powerful and dominant, your real home is what? وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Your vision is towards the akhirah. These things of the dunya, they come and they go. Does it make a big difference for the mu'min, the believer? Whether he's at the front, he's at the back. The real vision of the believer, al-mu'min, ru'yatul mu'min, is towards the akhirah. To get to that final abode. وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ The real place of living, of eternal bliss, your real home is the Akhirah. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If only we could understand and have knowledge in regarding that factor. Also we find وَالدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ What's happened to you believers? That the dunya, the Akhirah, the final abode, خَيْرُ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ is better for those individuals who have the consciousness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Can't you comprehend that? Can't you understand that? That so many of us that we begin to slip away of our vision and our devotion towards the akhirah. And thus you find even when a believer goes through these traumatizing situations inside this world, you find a small dip inside paradise. Did you ever see any difficulty inside your life? Did you face any hardships inside your life? One small dip in paradise and everything will be forgotten. Likewise the opposite. But a care for a disbeliever, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years of enjoying this life. One small dip in Jahannam, and the person will forget everything. And so we want to focus upon what will happen to the believer towards the end of their life or when they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the first occasion that you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the concept of paradise is right in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Some approximately verse number 25 we find, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ Give glad tidings to the believers that for these individuals who carry out the righteous actions, for them will be gardens of paradise underneath which rivers flow. 
كلما رزقوا منها من ثمرة رزقا قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأتوا به متشابها And when the fruits are given to these individuals they're going to highlight that we've been given these fruits before But here the key element we're going to focus upon tonight وأتوا به متشابها You're going to be given things which are similar to this dunya وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Pure spouses they will have and they reside for eternity inside paradise. So this concept of something which is similar to this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, well, in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses certain names, certain characteristics, certain sifat that the human being can relate to. As for their entity, their shape, their form, their taste, their color, would totally be something dynamic. But just as a form of relationship that we can relate, that if the word apple is used, we can relate to what may be an apple may be in this dunya. But that which will happen inside the akhirah will change. أَعْدَدْتُ لِعْبَادِ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ I prepared for my servants what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and the feeling, the perception has come upon no human being's heart or mind. That feeling. That is the preparation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared any for any of the believers. So the names are similar, they're synonymous, but their form and their identity will be totally any something different. So what are the fruits, the delights of paradise for the believers? And so we want to travel as a group, you need tonight, and travel through what they may classify as a journey through paradise. And obviously many of us may be thinking it could be something difficult, that how can we so many individuals travel together in a journey through paradise. Because all of us have our own feelings inside our heart, our own perceptions, our ill feelings, rancor, jealousy, hatred. So how can we travel through paradise? We'll put the affairs once again as a dunya on the side. Travel through paradise like the people of paradise. And the people of paradise that you find, the rancor and the ill feeling will be plucked out of their hearts. As you find the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, their hearts will be like the heart of a single man, for they will have no enmity, no jealousy amongst themselves. That's how people are going to travel through paradise. Not like in this dunya, there always seems to be some grudge, some rancor, some ill feeling inside the heart. But when you make that journey through paradise, that will be eliminated from the heart of the mu'min, of the believer. And thus you will find that they will enter paradise, those people whose hearts will be like those of the hearts of birds. That's how the people of paradise will be. Shura al-Hadith highlight why is the concept of birds being mentioned? What is it that the human being shares with birds? Resemblance of this method of birds inside paradise. Various extractions we mentioned by the ulama. Amongst them we find in general, birds are free from jealousy. They have no rank or ill feeling towards one another in general. That's a general theme of birds. So that's in paradise. Human beings will have hearts like birds. There will be no jealousy inside their hearts. A rank or ill feeling. Secondly, we find birds are always alert. A simple sound, simple moving of the wind, a twig, a branch, brings them alert. They have soft hearts. That's the belief inside paradise. Their hearts are always wakeful, obedient to hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may address them with or say towards them. Thirdly, we find trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for food. Just like the bird, it comes out in the morning having no food, no sustenance, and it comes back home with a full belly and food for it, the rest of its siblings, etc. Look at our belief. We claim to be people who trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is our real trust? In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the people of paradise. They complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the sustenance of being taken care by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then also you find as a side extraction, there's going to be some individuals once again who are going to be roaming around in the bellies of green birds. And that's a total different discussion that many of us have forgotten. We don't have the aspiration anymore. There's going to be some individuals who float around in the bellies of green birds and rest underneath the lanterns which are placed under Arsh rahman under the magnificent throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reside and fly around inside paradise. Don't classify those individuals who are slayed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as dead individuals. But they are alive and giving sustenance with their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find returning back to Surah Al-Hijr, the 15th chapter, verse number 47, We remove the rancor, the ill feeling, 
the bad feeling from their hearts, from their chest, and they become brethren towards one another, facing one another inside any paradise. The first batch that will enter into paradise will be glittering and shining like the full moon. تَعْرِفُ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ نَظْرَةَ النَّعِيمِ On their faces, you're going to find the nadra, the glance. The radiant shining will be upon this group of individuals who are entering into paradise. وُجُوهِ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَظِرَةً Some faces will be shining, glowing on that day. Other passages we find, وُجُوهِ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَعِمَةٌ Some faces will be rejoicing, gleeing, visible upon their faces. This is a day of success of these individuals going into paradise. Come together upon that reception. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا You find that the believers on that day we brought towards the paradise and the key element that we find here وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ Those individuals who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were inside the akhirah or inside this dunya. This is the first characteristic that we find amongst the people of paradise. That in this dunya there were individuals who were fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَادْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ And they come to the doors of paradise. You find here, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mentions, وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا The doors are just swung open for them. Swung, swung open for them. And they enter in, into paradise. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ Peace be upon you, rejoicing and glad tidings be upon you, be in a good state. فَادْخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ Enter into it to reside for eternity. Likewise, you find their family members amongst the righteous individuals, their friends, their comrades, all the people around them who follow that same methodology of trying to enter into paradise. جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ يَدْخُلُونَهَا وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِمْ Those amongst the righteous individuals, amongst their fathers, amongst their children, amongst their progeny. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَاب Angels will come upon them from every single entrance. Upon these individuals, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum fa ni'ma uqbaddar. Here comes the second characteristic. These individuals are fine. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be upon you because of your patience inside this dunya. That's another key element many of us have forgotten. There is no shortcut to paradise except for those individuals who may follow the methodology, the green birds. Other than that, it's a long journey. It's a long, tiresome journey to get to the end of the road to be given that reward. Of paradise. If we go back to the end of Surah Zumar, that we find the ending of this surah talking about these individuals, what will these individuals they're going to highlight? وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهُ Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who fulfilled his promise to us. Indeed, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true. The only individuals who break away from the promise is us. The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who lived true to his promise, his covenant, that he placed upon us Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to travel across these different places travel around inside paradise and this is going to be a reward for those individuals who lived a life of action as you find from the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah a person should try to do actions it's not just about belief it's to couple that with actions not that your actions solely will get you to paradise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive any individual that he wants subhanahu wa ta'ala and punish whoever he wants out of his justice. But a person needs to be striving and trying to do some action in paradise to show that I'm a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, you find by him in whose hand Muhammad's soul is, every one of them will know his dwelling in paradise better than he knew his dwelling inside this world. So real believers know their home. As soon as they set eyes upon their home, they know that is their real place of abode and final return. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's given us the house of lasting residence out of his bounty. It's not going to be a mortgage property inside this world, living for eternity. That is the real home of the believer. How many of us begin to wash away the sharia, and the darura, out of necessity, a roof over my head for my children, for my family? It's still not a permanent abode. The permanent abode for the believer will be inside the akhirah. The person will look, وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدْن مَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً The person will look at their fine dwellings, their good dwellings, that will be placed for the individual inside the garden of eternity. And that's when a person glances first at the home, a tent whose site 
in various narrations, some 30 miles in distance or 60 miles in distance, its width and its height as well. And you find that this tent, you find every corner, there will be the family of the believer will be at the corner of every single tent, which cannot be seen by other individuals. That's the first glance that will take place of the people in your paradise of looking at their homes. Some individuals may have a palace, like Umar anhu, when the Prophet Muhammad made that night journey or he saw in a dream, if I'm not mistaken, the house of Umar. And he wanted to enter into that home. And what happened? A beautiful woman was outside there on the fountain and refused to go into the home because he knew that the sense of ghira, sense of shame, jealousy that Umar had, which is the justified jealousy that many of us have forgotten towards our family members, etc. So he said that, how can I be jealous about you, Ya Rasulullah? You are free to enter into my palace and do as you please inside my palace. Other individuals that you find will be in such a lofty position of paradise that you'll be able to see the lofty mansions and palaces of the people of paradise just like you see the stars in the sky or you see the one star inside the sky. Those with the different ranks that will be given to different individuals inside paradise. To who do these lofty mansions belong to? Do they belong to the Anbiya? Do they belong to the messengers? Because that's what some of us could be thinking. There's going to be some individuals who'll get to that lofty goal, who'll get to that lofty destinations. It's for those individuals who believe in Allah and trust and in the message that the apostles came with. So that's a promise. It may not be prophets or messengers. There's going to be some individuals with a deep conviction in belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in following the Anbiya, that they'll be in that lofty position with the, with the Anbiya on a slightly lower rank or in a lofty position be granted to them. And paradise has some hundred grades. Hundred grades promised for the Mujahideen fi sabilillah and in between each grade that we find is the distance between the heaven and the earth. And if you ask for paradise, then ask for al firdausul a'la. Ask for the highest part of paradise because indeed from there you find Above that is the Arsh of Rahman, and from there you find the rivers of paradise flow from that highest peak, that highest point. Just like in the dunya, we're not satisfied with the meager amount which is given to us. Always trying to excel, always trying to get to the upper limit, always trying to get the most benefit that we could be given to us. But when it comes to the Akhirah, you find us, many of us, dragging our feet in coming towards the Akhirah. We don't want the best in Akhirah. Many of us have concept as well, if I just somehow drag my feet into paradise, that's enough for me, that's sufficient for me. Or if I'm punished for a short while, then I make it to paradise, then that's sufficient for me. What a wretched understanding that is. In the dunya, you don't follow that concept. You never take a loss. But for the akhirah, you're willing to take a loss and to, to go through those sacrifices inside you need the akhirah. As we continue our journey, our eyes fall upon that which is flying in you from Arsh Rahman, the rivers of paradise. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again gives a method of the rivers inside paradise. Method al Jannati Lati Wu'id al Muttaqoon. The parable of yani, the rivers or the gardens which have been promised yani, for the pious individuals. That paradise. What is inside that paradise? Fiha and Haru Mimma in Ghairi Asinin. Firstly, we find the first river for the believers or the pious individual will be rivers of water incorruptible. Pure water will be inside paradise. Secondly, we find rivers of milk whose taste hasn't become sour, hasn't been, hasn't been changed, or the milk doesn't go off. Because milk in this world, it goes off, leaves a stench, becomes sour, becomes difficult to drink. But that milk will be a pure milk, a pure substance to drink. Likewise, a wine which is pure, a delicious drink. Sharaban tahura, a pure drink. It's not going to be the wine of this dunya, which intoxicates your mind, makes you lose your senses. It's going to be a pure wine, a sealed nectar with misk on top of it, sealed. Pure drink to drink for the people of paradise inside the akhirah. And then fourthly, when haru min asalin musaffa, pure, clear honey will be given to the believers to drink. These are things that we can relate to inside the dunya. But once again, inside the akhirah, we are total different form. Other things that we find of the rivers or the fountains of springs, the spring of Tasneem, our eyes could fall upon that is a river or a fountain inside paradise. Aynan fiha tusamma sal sabila. Once again, sal sabila is a river, a fountain inside paradise. Fiha aynun jariya. There's going to be flowing rivers or fountains inside paradise. And where there's a water spring 
or fountains, there's going to be lush green grass, gardens, fruits, vegetations. What are the fruits and the vegetation or these delights of paradise? Inna lil muttaqina mafaza. Indeed, for the pious individuals, there will be success. Hadaiqa wa a'naba. Gardens for them, grape vines will be provided to these individuals. Fihima min kulli fakihatin zawjan. Every type of fruit, be two types of fruits will be given to the individual. Likewise, fihima fakihatun wa nakhlun wa rumman. For the individuals, if I'm believers, there will be fruits, there will be dates, there will be pomegranates that will be blessed and given to these individuals. Wajanal jannataini dan. They just be hanging low, able to pluck them and eat them at ease, at peace, at rest. Similar to the verse that we find, وَدَّانِيَةً عَلَيْهُمْ ذُلَالُهَا وَذُلِّلَتْ قُطُوفُهَا تَذْلِيلًا You find that the fruits, the shades will come low over them. And the fruits will begin to, the bunch of the fruit will hang low in compliance, making it easy for the individual to pluck the fruits and to eat any from paradise. Don't worry any about the season, any of these fruits, any that we find. وَفَاكِهَةٍ كَثِيرًا There's going to be many different types of fruits for the believers. La maqtu'atim wa la mamnu'a. You find that these fruits whose season is not limited nor supply forbidden. So it's not like this dunya. There's certain seeds, seasons for certain fruits, etc. There, there is no season. Every day is a new season for a different type of fruit. Plenty of place lying underneath the shade if a person wants to enjoy that, those fruits. That's even the shade that you find a swift rider, a good rider, just to cross a shade of one of the trees of paradise will take him a hundred years. Tasawwaru. Imagine the size of that tree. A hundred years for a swift rider to go past that shade will be the types of trees inside paradise. And thus we find that we don't need to be worried about such a vast space. Some of us may be thinking we need a vast space inside paradise. Know for a fact that a whiplash, the size of a bow, an arrow inside paradise is better than the world and whatever it contains. Whatever is upon this world and whatever it contains is trivial in comparison to a small whiplash place inside paradise. That's even the two sunans that we pray for Salatul Fajr. What do we find? Whoever preserves them is better than the dunya wama fiha. To pray those two raka'at that we find. And what have we become? A people who talk about reviving the sunnah, reliving the sunnah. Sunnah has become unfortunately, may Allah forbid, trivial for many of us individuals. Everything just happens to be sunnah now. Everything's just sunnah. It's not really that important. It's only a minor sin. It's not a major sin. Is that the way those individuals they followed in their life? Or rather they think that every single thing is something that could better my place and my location inside paradise. And thus we find other fruits that you may desire inside paradise. وَفَوَاكِهَ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ Fruits that you may desire, the thought may come into your heart, into your mind, and those fruits will be presented to you. We're going to give them, provide them with fruits and the flesh you need, of meat will be given to them. Whatever they desire. Flesh of the birds, flesh of the fish, etc. In here, ulama highlight this sir. Throughout these verses, you always find that fruit is presented before the main dish. In this dunya, you always eat fruit after your food. It's a general custom to digest your food. Not in paradise. You enjoy the fruits first and then you rejoice in eating the food. It's a sunnah which is turned around inside the akhirah, some ulama mentioned. And maybe you may be thinking that whatever you may desire will come about as we find inside paradise. Whatever the heart desires, the soul desires, and whatever rejoices, the eyes will be brought in front of the individual. And possibly, as we made that journey into paradise together, we may have become separated now. And even more separation that we find that some of us may have taken different paths inside paradise. And some of us may have gone through that marketplace or that street, even though in general you only go through that street on Yawmul Jum'ah. But you find as we go through this marketplace, persons increased in their beauty and loveliness before they return back to our families and maybe our new families as well. Because many individuals want to con focus upon the concept Hurun Ain, the Huris that will be given to the individual inside paradise. Those brothers always worried about these affairs. Don't worry, even if you're not married inside this dunya, there will be no unmarried person in paradise. Everyone will have two wives inside paradise, will be given to them. 
And you can read all the rest of the sifat that we bestowed upon these um, blessed wives that we given to these individuals. Already, however, in a state of beauty, if you look at the description of people of paradise that you find, yuhallawna fiha min asawira min dhahabin wa lu'lu'a. You find that these people are going to be adorned with bracelets of gold and pearls. وَلِبَاسٌ فِيهَا harir, And their garments on that day will be silken garments be placed upon yani, these individuals inside yani, paradise. وَيَلْبَسُونَ ثِيَابًا خُدْرًا مِنْ سُنْدُسٍ وَإِسْتَبْرَقٍ You find these individuals will be placed or garments will be wearing, green garments they'll be wearing of silk. And likewise heavy brocade, heavy jewelry will be placed yani, upon these individuals. The clothes of the people of paradise will not wear out. They will not wear out in paradise. A person needs to be worried that maybe my clothes may rip, clothes may need to be renewed, etc. In paradise, they will remain there. And even if we take this, this ayah literally, green clothing, that our brothers from amongst the Sufiyun take that green clothing is a blessed clothing to take inside this dunya. If only you took the Quran literally as well, about the belief of Ahl Sunnah, because they become just taking these things literally, even though there is no strong evidence that green is a blessed, you know, dress sense to be worn you know, inside this dunya, there may be some preference you know, towards that. And we're going to come to that which makes us differ, is a concept of belief. Our Ahlul Sunnah take the belief factor, something literally about what has been promised for individuals inside paradise without making any ta'wil or tahrif or tabdeel, without changing the ayat in the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the mu'min, the believer inside paradise, externally and internally has been purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There will be no spit, there will be no saliva, there will be no blowing of one's nose, there will be no defecation. It will not take place. All of these deficient characteristics inside the world will be removed inside the akhirah. They will be removed. And that's one may think, as Aisha radiallahu anha asked, that how will a person digest if I'm not mistaken? And it will be the belching, the burping of musk. Because even when you burp, you digest your food, you find a foul smell comes out of your mouth. But not inside the akhirah. That belching will be musk. Likewise, the sweat of the believer in paradise, the sweat that comes, the odor that comes from every single human being will be musk. Will be that sweat of musk that will be placed upon that individual inside yani the akhirah. So everything will be unique about the individual. Hatta you find that even the natural form of the human being will go back to the original form of Adam Islam upon 60 cubits. Thus you can see why the individual will begin to live that life of enjoying these blessings inside yani, paradise. Utensils of gold and silver that we find and the comb sorry, of gold and silver will be placed, placed upon these individuals. Once again, a person who takes gold inside this dunya, wears silk inside this dunya for men, will be forbidden inside the akhirah. So if you follow the things of this dunya to enjoy inside this dunya, you've had your share inside this dunya. You've taken it inside this dunya. You will not drink the wine of the akhirah. You will not wear the gold of the akhirah. You will not wear the silk of the akhirah. That's how simple it is. Muslims are simple individuals. Simple teachings that we follow. There's no technical debate to get involved in. Abstain from these issues and you'll be rewarded with them inside the akhirah. And there's nothing really that you're missing inside this dunya in these evil substances that we find in the, around us. Also, we find that inside paradise, that there will be no sickness or no fatigue upon the individual. So once again, what we find inside this dunya, that we all fall ill. We all have these difficulties that we may go through. But inside the akhirah, we find لَا يَمَسُّنَا فِيهَا نَصَبٌ وَلَا يَمَسُّنَا فِيهَا لُغُوب There will be no fatigue and no tiredness will touch the individuals inside paradise. And don't worry about being evicted. No one's going to be evicted from paradise once you make it to paradise. There's no moving out of paradise. There's going to be no fatigue upon the believers inside paradise. And likewise, there's going to be no one is going to be expelled out of paradise. They are the companions of paradise. They're going to reside for eternity inside paradise. So once an individual makes it to paradise, is going to remain there for eternity by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Paradise has no elderly individuals in paradise. Everyone will be young. Everybody will be, everybody will be at the supreme, the prime age. No one will fall ill and no one will grow old. 
everyone would be in affluent, in good circumstances, nothing to complain about. And likewise, you find, وَنُودُوا أَنْتِلْكُمُ الْجَنَّةُ أُرِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ A caller will call out. This is the paradise that you have inherited. Once again, بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Because of what you used to do inside this dunya. That's how simple it is. Caller will call out. You've inherited this paradise by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the actions you used to do inside the dunya. And thus you find that the key element that you find that there will be no death. There's no death. There's no dying in, in paradise. And thus you find the kabsh will come, the ram will be bought and placed in between paradise and hellfire. And the people of hellfire will recognize that this is the ram of death. And the people of paradise will recognize this is the ram of death. And thus it will be said to the people of hellfire, khuludun fala maut. Eternity for you remain forever in the hellfire. Said to the people of paradise, khuludun fala maut. Live for eternity in paradise, there is no death upon you. That is whereby the believers will begin to rejoice. A life of eternity inside in the paradise. And that's after, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all these various delights of paradise, there's one other key element that many of us, that we forget. What is amongst the most blessed of delights of the people of paradise that we find? وَرِدْوَانٌ مِّنَ Allah To gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the people of paradise will be posed this question time and time again. Do you want something else? Do you need something else? Is there anything else that we can ask for, Ya Rabb? Is there anything else that we can ask for what you've given us inside paradise? He said, I'm going to place upon you my happiness. My contentment will be placed in you, upon you and I will never be angry with you. So think about that. In this dunya, many of us pleasing people at the expense of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then on that day you want to claim the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why life will be difficult. There'll be many, many obstacles because we know that this dunya in the hadith of Sahih Muslim that we find that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created paradise and Jibreel alayhi salam said, whoever sees paradise, paraphrasing the hadith, sees the beauty of paradise, we just want to dive straight into paradise. The glitter, the gold, the glamour, the embezzlement, the pleasures, the na'im, the bliss, just wants to dive straight into paradise. And whoever sees Jahannam, the terror, the agony, the pain, the suffering, the torture, just want to abstract themselves and stay away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights, cover up paradise with makarih, with obstacles. Surround Jahannam with temptations. Every single path of temptation is a path that eventually leads you closer to the hellfire. And paradise has got many, many obstacles. There's all obstacles that are placed there for a person to get to paradise. And a person has to come over every single step in those various obstacles that individual will face till eventually they're purified and they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's once again inside Surah Tawbah that we find when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the bliss of paradise, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions وَرِدْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ ذَلِكَ وَالْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ The greatest thing is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the ultimate supreme success for the believers. And then comes the stance of Ahl Sunnah. This is where all this academia all this debate begins to take place, that our stance is a simple stance, is a basic elementary stance. Those individuals who begin to reinterpret the text and the nasus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is where they're pushing themselves away. Because amongst the greatest blessings, or possibly the greatest blessing for the mu'min will be ru'yatullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will be the ultimate success. The one that you worship on this dunya for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, it will only be for the believers that you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like you see the full moon on a full night, when it's at its full days, the 13th, the 14th, 15th, you don't be surrounded or any pushing or any shoving or any difficulty in visualizing the moon, you will see your Lord on that day. And that will only be for the believers. On that day, once again, we began with faces will be gleaming will be glowing. They will be glowing because those faces will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's only for the believers inside paradise. So when we begin to enter into this academic debate about how some individuals begin to reject these ayat or make ta'wil of these ayat, make tahrif of these ayat, this is the blessing of Allah. Ahl sunnah is to take them literally. That believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah. 
Remember, the format of the human being will change and Allah subhanahu will make it possible for the believer to visualize those blessings and that bliss and likewise to visualize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that will be the greatest of the blessings in the, upon the believers. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to follow that path of paradise, to follow that journey through paradise, to be committed and devoted that whatever takes place around us in the world, don't let us distract us from coming closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because every single individual has to come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all on his or her own and to answer for their own actions and the choices that they made. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place these words in the mizan of hasanat, the one who disseminated the words and those who are collecting the words. وَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِجَمِيلِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ سُبْحَانَكَ لَمَا بِحَمْدِكَ شُرَ اللَّهِ إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ عَلَيْكَ جزاك الله خير Before we move on to question and answers I think we'll, as we mentioned at the beginning of the lecture we're going to have a little questions from the speaker inshallah to the, to the audience a little quiz and there's some prizes available as well, inshallah. I think there's five questions um, to be asked. Make the first one the hardest, I think. And um, we'll, we'll, inshallah, give out the prizes. Just a reminder for, for next week before we carry on. Um, next week's lecture is the final in the current series, uh, Journey to Another World. The lecture title next week is The Torment of the Hellfire. And it's going to be Brother Abu Sama delivering that as well, inshallah. That's next week. Um, so before question answers, we'll, we'll do the quiz, inshallah. Leave it to... Uh, the to, to continue with that. Now you want me to come up with five questions? If you get them right, you might get a ticket to paradise, huh? <laughs> well, you be, don't be surprised as many individuals go around selling that to people. They sell that to you physically. Give me £10,000, I guarantee you a place in paradise. And you know who, who I'm referring about. Maybe you could go pay a tr trip there and try to get, out, get their ticket to paradise, huh? Dave, inshallah, but I say make it as difficult as possible. I haven't got any difficult questions in my mind, but um, let's just take the first question, make it maybe easy for everyone. Huh? How many gates of paradise are there? That brother his hand up first, right at the back. No shouting should be the rules. Go ahead, Akhi. Eight, yeah, tfadl, Akhi. You, you collect the prize, yeah? The bottom one, brother. Your ticket to paradise, Akhi. Here you go. <laughs> Don't say I gave it to you, Akhi. <laughs> oh, that one, sorry. Dave, I mentioned the first uh, verse inside Surah Al Baqarah. What's the number of the verse? Tadlakhi. Wrong. 25, yeah, guide, Akhi. Tadl. You should have bigger prizes and bigger questions, isn't it, eh? mashallah? <sighs> well, which surah talks about a lot of about the um, about paradise and the, the drink of paradise and the people, the goblets of paradise, the young children of paradise. Which surah is it? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. La. That's not the surah I'm looking at. Go ahead. La. No shouting out. Yeah, yeah, shabab. No shouting out. La, little bit. Akhi, fadal. Hey. Ahsan ta'al. Well done, mashallah. That's not, the books are not good for you. Go get some toys, okay? Give them to your dad, the books. <laughs> but yeah, make it hard, okay? You can come up with a question, okay? Yeah? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, the ticket, the ticket inside there, I think, so is it?
Like how many other people of paradise who will go into paradise who don't rely on any talismans or anything etc that we find? Yeah? No. No. At the back there, 70,000. Tafadil, Akhi. This one, Akhi. Huh? I don't think you should have sat down beforehand, Akhi. Okay, inshallah, it's the last question. You make it a very hard one, inshallah. I told you I'm not good at questions, Akhi. It's not my job to. I'm not. I'm not examiner, Akhi. Huh? Okay, the seven individuals have been promised to be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not asking for the seven for everyone puts up their hand. You're reading my mind now, aren't you? Huh? What do they all share that brings them together? What do they all share that brings them together? David, the guy? La. It's not. Akhi, it's badal. La. La. Ahsan, that's the right answer. All of them are fighting their desires. The Imam Adil is breaking his desires. The Shabu Nashafi Ibadat is breaking his desires. The person who's giving their wealth is breaking their desires. So one half the answer is fear of Allah, but that what I was searching for was that they all break their desires to be underneath there. Your ticket somewhere inside there, Akhi. It could be Yameen, Akhi. Take your right hand, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. That's it. Jazakallah khairan. Um, if there are any um, questions, um, and we can, we can take some now. We have a little time. Um, if there, anybody has any other questions for the brother, inshallah, we'll take them now. They brothers talk about if you dream, whatever you dream about will be given to you inside paradise, for example, dragons. alam yani, if dragons do exist, because dragons are a myth anyway. But maybe you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create you a dragon or give you some riding beast that you can fly through yani, through paradise. alam. There'd be much better beasts than dragons inside paradise, inshallah. That's something you could ask. Remember, you, whatever your heart desires, whatever you want, you can ask for it. alam yani. That's just a linguistic debate that people have about heaven and paradise because some people just say that the skies above is classified as the heavens. But really, we're still always in the skies. You have to penetrate through the skies and then you enter into paradise. There's no way that no anybody in this earth can penetrate and go into, into the heaven, go into paradise. It's not possible. Yeah. He was in paradise and he was expelled from paradise. That was Jannah, that was paradise. That's right. He was residing, well, Lord, I'm inside paradise. And then he was expelled from paradise and came down upon this earth. And we have to live upon this earth. Then you have to go back to the original abode, which is yani, paradise. So we were expelled uh, from paradise and we want to return back to paradise, inshallah. <laughs> Oh uh -huh.